what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another DIY episode here on You Are Auto Enthusiasts. Today, we're going to get right into it because some of you are choosing to work on your Alfa Romeo for the first time and may not know where to start. Now, before I get into plugging in this Bluetooth adapter and talk about these cables, there's two specific things to highlight. Number one, Check in your driver's side door jam to see what year your car was manufactured. In a previous video, I talk about Fiat Chrysler automobiles installing a device called a secure gateway module in their vehicle starting in 2017, specifically the Alphas uh, in 2018. So you'll want to check out that video as I go into more detail about what the module is and why your born on date is very important. Now, once you have determined you do have a SGW module, there is a workaround for it and you can get a SGW bypass like the one I installed in my 2020 QV. Now, if you're looking to tackle this on your own, there are a couple of reference videos right here on YouTube and I'll link a couple of them in the description. So I have two of these dongles here for a reason. And let's talk about the iCar Pro first. I bought this dongle when I first purchased this Stelvio QV knowing that my intentions were to work on my own vehicle. And it's because uh, the app itself, Multi ECU Scan, does highlight that this is one of uh, the adapters and this was the least expensive that I can remember, around 30 bucks. However, upon plugging this in and beginning to try to run adaptations and things like that in which you do need the cables, and I'll talk more about that shortly, it, it did not communicate uh, very well. I was not able to uh, run the adaptations and resets that were needed to get my QV out of limp mode that it was in at the time. In the attempt to not have to go to the dealership, I did go ahead and step up and bought the OBD Link MX Plus on Amazon. And of course, if you haven't gotten one yet and you want to get yours, I highly recommend this one. The link is in the description below. Of course, if you want to go ahead and get yours through Alfizimo, while you're getting the cables, by all means do so. You're probably buying the SGW bypass as well. Whether you plug this in first or start the car does not matter at all, uh, but let's get under here so you can see where the port is and it is right here under the driver's side footwell. Turn your adapter to mate up with it and you already see lights, camera action. No. You don't have to start your engine, but when you're messing with the ECUs and module, I highly suggest that you have stable or continuous uh, power running through your vehicle. So if you're going to just put it in accessory mode, make sure your battery is fully charged. Now, because I'm doing this tutorial, I'm going to be sitting here for a little while. If I were to do this without the car running, I would hook up my jump pack so that it does have stable power coming from it. The last thing you want to do is be in the midst of the computer running through processes and it dies and bricks your module. And now you're sitting here with a $50,000 paperweight. Now, the first thing you'll need to do is go into your phone settings. I'm running iPhone, so I am gonna go into uh, my Bluetooth settings. And in my Bluetooth settings, I'm gonna connect directly to the OBD Link MX Plus, which is highlighted right there in the settings that is now done so i am going to run over to uh, multi ecu scan now with that said uh, multi ecu scan is a subscription uh app uh, i believe the software is by subscription as well as not just a full license so you are renewing that annually and if memory serves me correctly it was about 60 bucks 59.99 plus tax so around 60 bucks for the app so as you see here, it works for a lot of our brands uh, under Stellantis now, not FCA, uh, the Alfa Romeo, Fiat, Lancia, and of course the list goes all the way down. Because I've already set this up to my Stelvio, you'll see it at the bottom, but I'll run you through if you're picking your vehicle. So let's go in the Alfa Romeo. As you can see, it's a long list of, of model choices here. Uh, there's the Stelvio right down at the bottom, and it gives you uh, the choices between the 2 liter, 2.9 and 2.2 liter uh, vehicle. And as selected, the 2.9 liter selection. Now in here we have 
the list of different things that you can go into. We're going to engine management and the way to have it split up is on the banks of the engine. I'm gonna go in and actually connect and then here we are. So it's gonna pull the VIN code, it's gonna pull the software information, all of that. Now, if I had any errors right here, uh, I hit the error right at the bottom, the triangle, and currently I have no fault codes. If there were any uh, codes, hard codes, or even soft codes, they would be there. You'd have an opportunity to try to clear them where it says clear errors in the top right. Now, the one thing I really love about this thing right here is the parameters. You can get a real time look at what's happening uh, with your engine. And then of course, you may not understand all the numbers and what's happening, but you at least have some reference. So right here, we can see battery voltage, the odometer reading, um, you've got engine management like RPM. And if I rev it, There we go, and that number changed. So I like that you get a lot of live data with what's going on, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You've got different actuators and things like that. I'm not gonna execute, <laughs> not gonna execute anything in there. Uh, now here is where you can do the adjustments and resets if needed. Uh, reset your mileage for oil change, you can do that here. Uh, self, uh, self adaptation parameters reset. So you go in, you hit execute, and it's gonna give you the warnings that it needs to give pertaining to what's about to happen. All right, and here we are on the other, so I'm gonna go down to the other side. And here we are. So we're gonna go into errors again. Looks like I've, I'm showing an error. Can line. Um, I have not been able to figure out what is happening there. I'm gonna clear that. All right, and now we have no fault codes. What I can say based on the BMWs I've owned, uh, I have seen fault codes that based on the, uh, the technical service bulletin, acknowledge that a code may exist. It may be a false code meaning that it exists for it's been triggered for some reason but the associated reason is not present uh, unless there's other things associated with it then it's really not a true fault so that seems to be the one that comes up for me but at least i can keep track of it and and make my notes that i have cleared it on this particular day at this time and i can track and see maybe what happened prior to seeing that code again and then maybe that is foretelling me there could be something uh, happening in the background that may lead to a repair. All right, here we are the parameters again, actuators, and here we go down here, four, five, and six. I didn't highlight it on the other one before, and then the previous one was one, two, and three. Okay, let's see what else we have. We do have transmission. So if you're working on the transmission, this is where you're going to find uh, where to... All right, so I just went into the automatic gearbox, checking for errors, error communication with Okay, so I have an error. I'm going to run it through uh, an adaptation right now, and it is now complete. So that was a self-adaptation reset. I'm going to go to errors. We're going to try to clear this now. Okay, I am going to have to look and see what is happening uh, with that. So let's just look at actuator base adjustment. Uh, in here, it gives the conditions uh, that are necessary to run this test. And what I'll say is each condition does have to be met uh, before uh, it will allow you to run those adjustments. So if there's one thing uh, that is uh, not correct, let's just say maybe you're not pressing the brake or the AC is running and it should be off, uh, the oil temperature is not up to temp, things like that. Uh, it won't allow for you to do it. So you will have to satisfy all conditions uh, before you can run the test. And of course, if you hit OK, it's going to immediately say failed execute because you did not satisfy the conditions. All right, let's disconnect from that. We're going to go into, I'm going to come back out of transmission. Let's go into brakes. Uh, I'm just going to pick one because I want you to see what happens next. We're going to hit connect. And here we are, we have, uh, it's asking for the gray adapter. In the case of needing the adapter, we are gonna have to disconnect the Bluetooth module, which I'm gonna do now. 
all right the module is now going to plug into one end of the cable and now you're going to take your cable and plug that in where the module once was and we are looking for lights again which we have i assume it will ring true for any phone but at least on iphone it does disconnect from bluetooth so you do have to go back in and connect all right and now we are connected so i am going to go back into the app hit ok and allow for it to uh, connect now we've got some Okay, so we've got some got some lights that are on. Any errors? No fault codes. And we've got plenty of valves and solenoids and uh, control lights and all sorts of things in here. Okay, so there's nothing to adjust. And I'm going to disconnect. All right, and in this case, I am going to stop the vehicle. And then I'm going to restart it. Okay. Now, trust me. <laughs> it is a little alarming uh, when you get those lights coming on. Because the last thing you want is this thing to be in limp mode. Uh, or anything because those lights are on and I know that's that could be scary that you feel like you didn't mess something up but um, no you didn't mess anything up I promise you I got a little got a little worried there for just a second so that is what you will run into trying to get into certain systems where it does require uh, this you know the gray cable or uh, the blue cable all right, so I have now disconnected the gray cable. I put the module uh, back in directly. So I'm just going to go through a few other places here. So you've got uh, your airbag. I'm not going to go into that. Uh, we have our service interval. And of course, that's where you go in to reset the service interval. All right, here we go. We got dashboard. Uh, let's go into body. Uh, we got radio frequency, can setup, proxy alignment procedure. Okay, so. It said everything is alignment. So as of right now, uh, the vehicle proper configured partial alignment is not needed. All right, cool. All right, now, so we've got all of the different modules uh, are in here and you see it's a whole host of things. Uh, driver assistance system, drivetrain control. Uh, we got radio frequency hub, climate control, entertainment tele telematic, uh, blind spot sensors, uh self-adaptive headlight man there's so many different things that are in this vehicle it's nutty uh a lot of stuff happening in this vehicle which is of course that's one of the main reasons why it's such a sensitive car it has all these different systems that are working in tangent all right then we got electric steering don't need to go don't need to do anything really in there uh, but if you have something steering, like a steering angle sensor or something like that, I believe that light did come up. If you needed to reset something in there or look for, uh, understand why that code is there, uh, I'm sure that's where we would be going. Uh, climate control, comfort seat. I'm going to see, what does that say? I don't want to, I don't want to see what that is. Oh, but. Uh, errors, do I have errors? No faults. Uh, parameters, actuators. Okay, so we got the seat, heated seat, passenger heated seat, steering wheel heated. Oh, okay. System calibration. All right, cool. I know mine works, so and the seat definitely works, so we're <laughs> we're good there. All right, so we get to do some calibrations in there. Climate control. All right, we're good there. Headlights. I I have had to go in here. My headlights were replaced under warranty because it had really bad condensation. It probably was not calibrated uh, because I was getting people flashing lights at me uh, when I would drive it at night and I barely drove this at night. If I drove it, it was during the daytime. 
Uh, and a few times driving at night, I'm getting flashed. And I'm like, man, my high beams are not on. What is up? And then finally, uh, once I did the adaptations, I also went in here and uh, reset the adaptive headlights. And I haven't been getting flashed by anybody since. Please forgive me for the abrupt cut in this tutorial. I am pretty much at the end. Uh, I was having some technical difficulties that day when I was recording it. And uh, I don't know where the third, fourth, or fifth take has disappeared to. The last thing that I was looking for uh, to do was to uh, confirm if Comfort Access uh, worked on the vehicle. And I'll plan to go through that in another video on coding uh, specific things in or out of the vehicle. Uh, in this particular case, I wanted to have comfort access to open and close the windows with the alpha. Whether I'm using the key fob or the door handle, uh, the mirror closes on lock. Now, the only thing that does not happen is if the windows are down, you press and hold the button there or press and hold the button on the key fob it does not close the windows or the sunroof. Now, I'm not sure if you've owned a vehicle where that does work. My BMW M3 here uh, did not come that way from factory, nor did it come where the mirrors would fold in or out on lock and unlock. So now that has been coded in, they unlock, they unfold when the door is unlocked, and then they also fold when the car is locked. Now the biggest difference is even with unlocking this, I'm holding my hand here, nothing is happening uh, with the window or sunroof. Now upon using the key fob, the window goes down as well as the sunroof opens. With the key fob, I lock it, it will let everything up. Now the good part about it is if I don't have the key fob is in my pocket, I can just do it right from the handle. So that's the beauty of that. That's the beauty of having comfort access and I thoroughly enjoyed that on my M3. I'm wanting to get that set in here. Although it is turned on or activated, I'm not getting anything to work thus far. So I will continue to work on that. Um, in the meantime, and come back with another video once I have figured out how to get that to work. Hopefully this tutorial will help you get started. Uh, I will just leave you with a quick note. Do your best to just stick with calibrating or resetting the things that need to be reset. These things are very, very sensitive with all of the different modules and the systems that work together. If you get in there and play around a little too much with things that are not needed, you run the risk of uh, offsetting something in your car. And also, look, I am just sharing what has worked for me. I am not a mechanic or a technician for Alfa Romeo. I am just a car enthusiast who enjoys turning a wrench on his own vehicle. That is it. So everything I share with you, uh, please know that you're doing it at your own risk. So if you're not comfortable doing it, take it to a dealership, Take it to an independent mechanic. Take it to someone that is confident in doing it uh, and that you feel will get the job done for you. Otherwise, you won't know until you try some of these things to see if they work for you. So thanks again for tuning in. I look forward to bringing more DIYs and tutorials on the Alfa Romeo brand, especially of the Stelvio QV. And in the meantime, continue to have fun turning the wrench on your vehicle, and I will see you in the next DIY. Keep driving. Salute.